So I'm here on behalf of the, the CEP and actually also on, on behalf of uh, the members of the working group of the ITF who has been working on the, the SAE J2601-5 heavy duty fueling protocol where I assume many of us have been waiting for and which should be published at the end of uh, this of uh, December somewhere. So in three weeks, you will be able, you should be able to download uh, this protocol. So you're having a preview uh, of this uh, of this protocol. So here are the, uh, here is the agenda. Uh, what I propose is that after you let me do the lecture and then after each of these chapters, we will have a Q&A session. I think that makes it uh, best workable. So first I will uh, talk a little bit about the current standards that we are uh, not only the SAE J2601-5, but, but all current standards concerning interoperability between vehicle and dispenser. And then I will move to the overview of the Dash 5. And uh, a very important chapter are the assumptions and boundary conditions because they are different from the light duty vehicle, uh, obviously, and the tanks are bigger. So that's a, an important remark. And uh, communication is quite important. The, it does have a non-communication uh, fueling methodology for uh, in the Dash 5. Uh, but there are some. Uh, there is also an update on uh, the 2799 uh, concerning communication, which, which is specifically for the Dash 5 protocol. So I will cover that one too. And then we come to the two different protocols, which are included into uh, the Dash 5. So that we still have a table-based version. Uh, it has the same name as in the J2601 category D, but it is an upgraded version. And then we also have a, what we call the advanced MC formula, uh, which is called uh, our uh, fearless leader, uh, almost godlike being uh, Steve Madison. He calls it the MC formula high flow general protocol. <laughs> Uh, so that's uh, MC formula based or advanced MC formula. Then some precautions that I need to discuss about. Uh, if I have time, I might also present uh, a little bit about the appendixes uh, where some new features are explained. And then uh, towards the next step, because the Dash 5 protocol will be the base for uh, several new upcoming protocols uh, in the ISO. So those are the different chapters. So uh, as I already explained, after each chapter, we will have a, a Q&A session, uh, which not only me, but I noticed that there are several other working group members also joining this uh, uh this session so i will have some assistance from them also to answer some of the questions okay let's have a look at the different standards concerning interoperability between the vehicle and the dispenser i'm only talking about uh, compressed gaseous hydrogen so I, i'm not talking about liquid or cryo compressed hydrogen i'm also not going to talk here but it's not shown are all the standards concerning the tank system or the the vehicle fueling system inside the vehicle. So only about the interoperability between station and vehicle. So we have, of course, here some standards concerning the mechanical connection. For Europe, uh, it is the EN ISO 17268, which is still mentioned. Also in the AFIR, it is mentioned. Uh, we are not using the American standard uh, J2600, but very soon uh, the ISO 17268 will be replaced by uh, the ISO 17268-1, which is for low fuel, for low flows, so uh, up to 120 grams per second, and the dash two for above 120 grams per second. I will talk a little bit more about that later. Concerning the communication, uh, the dash five is completely working on the current infrared communication. So hardware wise, there is no difference. There is a small upgrade uh, on the software. I will talk about that too. 
but uh, for real bidirectional uh, communication, for advanced uh, and extreme fast uh, fueling of heavy duty vehicles, uh, it will this will be uh, in the ISO 19885-2. And uh, for the dispenser side, uh, many of you will know that there is a, now also an ISA 19880-2 available. Um, and of course the dash one, which starts to be a little bit outdated because there's not so much mentioned concerning high flow, will probably also be reviewed. I'm not sure when this will happen. The last planetary, plenary meeting, uh, it was not very clear, but I think we could start maybe already in 2024 to update that one. There is also, of course, the very important uh, table C2, Annex C, where we can see the FAT and SAT uh, tests that need to be performed. For hydrogen quality, Afir mentioned still the EN 17124 as the hydrogen quality specification or standard, which is basically a combination of the ISO 14687, the hydrogen quality specs, and the 19880-8, the quality control. There is also a new standard, uh, the Dash 9, which covers uh, specifically sampling, and in the United States, they use 2719. But for this presentation, I will talk about fueling protocols only and a little bit about communication. So about this red item and uh, for fueling protocol, Afir talks about EN 17127. Now, when you look into that standard, you will not notice really a protocol, uh, but it will tell you that you need to follow a standard which is published by an official SDO, so an official standardization organization, uh, which basically means that you will need to follow SAE or ISO or the Japanese standard JPEG. And uh, we all know here the J2601 for light duty vehicles. Um, the 2020 version is the latest version. Uh, here also we will need to update it. Uh, probably also in, uh, well, I'm quite sure in 2024, we will start the update of the J2601. And uh, soon we will have, we will receive also a Dash 4 version, uh, which is, it says ambient temperature fueling, but honestly, uh, this is not, uh, this is not meant for heavy duty. This is meant rather for those micro stations with the fixed orifice uh, for slow fueling of, of rather passenger cars. Um, of course, in this presentation, I will cover the Dash 5 and uh, afterwards, we will have the 19885-1, which is a uh, very general talking about fueling protocols, how to develop your own protocol, and the dash three will be the heavy duty vehicle ISO version of the protocol. So quite a lot of standards, and uh, I will only uh, look at some important standards which could be which are related to the Dash 5. So first one is the mechanical connection, the nozzle receptacle. Uh, in the ISO 17268 2020 version, we had a, a drawing uh, with specific dimensions for a receptacle with a maximum flow of 60 grams per second. And this will not exist anymore. Uh, you can put a cross over it. Uh, and it will be replaced completely by uh, another receptacle, which has exactly the same outer dimensions. So the compatibility to fit the nozzle to the receptacle will be 100% identical, but it has here um, a di inner diameter of four millimeters instead of three millimeters, which will make it possible to go to a maximum allowable flow of 90 grams per second. This uh, standard will be available end of this year, so also in several weeks from now, as a this standard, and it will become an official uh, international standard end of 2024. So you can already download it in a few weeks from now. And 
the, of course, dash five of the SAE J2601 will focus on this one. Another item where the dash five will focus on is the 300 grams per second high flow uh, receptacle. Um, <clears throat> this one will, um, it still needs to be discussed. Um, we have not yet started, for example, the discussion of the dimensions of this uh, receptacle, so uh, it still needs to be started. So the picture you see here is, is, is just an example, but it's it's not uh, it's not sure that this will be the the final uh, version at all because the discussion still need to start. So that one that this will be available end of 2025 if everything goes smooth, but uh, we will we will see uh, how this um, the work on this of this working group will proceed. Concerning communication, um, this dash five has still a protocol for no communication. And probably um, we will see, but my, there is a chance that the dash five non-communication methodology might be used as a kind of fallback mode for the ISO protocol in case there is no communication. Obviously, as you know, with no communication, we will always have a low SOC, but in this case of the dash five, we will probably also have a low speed. Um, so it, it depends a little bit on the on the circumstances. Uh, it's not advised, of course, to have no communication. Therefore, we will use, uh, we can still use the current infrared communication which is actually version 1.1. You are not allowed to use 1.0 anymore, so it should be 1.10, uh, which is the one which we all know and has quite some uh, normal performance and, and of course a good SOC uh, between 95 and 100% SOC should be reachable. An upgrade will come to version two, and I will discuss this more in detail because the dash five will use version 2 and version 2 will have some changes like for example total volume and uh, tank volume now called total volume will be expanded from 5000 liter to 10000 liter and we will also make extensive use of the optional data uh, uh, tab so uh, very important for dash 5 that you make sure that your infrared communication is also upgraded to version 2. Otherwise, you cannot use the, the dash 5. And uh, finally, in the dash 2, there we will use advanced communication method. Also here, it's not decided yet how the hardware will look like. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, but version 2 hardware wise, there is no difference. So it's only software which will change. But for the uh, ISO standard, hardware will change for sure. Uh, because we do need a bi-directional communication which should be very secure and very safe and no chance at all for any kind of error and which could in the end uh, what should in the end result in an extreme fast fueling depending on of course on the station and how the vehicle was built so if i look at the uh, fueling protocol for light duty vehicles the 2601, which we all know very well, we know that there is a category A, B, C, and D. And, and D was meant actually for uh, heavy duty vehicles above 10 kilogram capacity. But we all know that this, uh, this D category, if for fueling, let's say 10, 15 kilogram, it is quite good. It's uh, certainly, uh, a very good uh, valid method but once you go to 25 30 kilograms or higher uh, it's a very lousy lousy protocol because you're always limited to this flow rate of 60 grams per second uh, so um, therefore in the next review of the SAE J2601 for light duty vehicles in 2024 most probably of course this will need to be agreed in consensus. Uh, we, we will need to discuss it, but the intention is that we will probably remove D category 
from the light duty vehicle protocol. And this is very important. I will come to that later. Uh, why it actually needs to be removed. Okay, so that is the uh, chapter one, uh, the current standards and uh, an overview of the upcoming standards of interoperability.